Thank you. Uh, you're going to hear a lot of, so let me tell you a story tonight. So I'll, a lot of what I do is story-based and um, some, some terrible jokes. Uh, for the, when I was in the fifth grade, I applied and auditioned for my talent show. And the teacher's name was Mrs. Peel. And I was uh, 10, 11 in the fifth grade. And I worked really hard. And I did this whole stand-up comedy card trick bit. And I, I, was so, I was so excited. I was so prepared. Everybody in my neighborhood had seen it 50 times. Uh, my mom and dad had seen it uh, enough. And I performed it. And the class loved it because they're kids. And uh, Mrs. Peel says, Paul, I hope you get a good job because nobody in their right mind will ever pay a dollar to watch you do magic tricks or watch you uh, tell jokes. So thank you, Mrs. Peel. Um, so I feel obligated to start with a joke. Man uh, goes to a funeral, and he taps on the widow's shoulder, and he says, do you mind if I go say a word? And the widow says, no, please. So he walks up to the microphone, tap, 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 plethora. Turns around and walks back. And as he walks past the widow, the widow grabs his arm and says, thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> it's a slow burner. It's a slow burner. Trust me. Somebody will laugh here in about five minutes. They'll be like, oh, I've seen three amigos. I know plethora. So my, my show is called The Mystery Collection, and it's based on the idea that was started by the Fox sisters in, uh, in, uh, in upstate New York back, uh, back when the, the foundings of, of the spiritualist religion, which is still, oddly enough, a religion today. The, they believe that objects held the energies of the people that owned them. Let's say I, I pass on someday and my wife takes some of my junk that she hasn't sold on eBay to uh, one of these mediums and they, they can use it to contact me. So I believe that, that uh, the story behind an object uh, has anybody seen the, the movie The Red Violin? It's, it's along those lines. Uh, I mean, what a great movie. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. It's about a violin from the day it was made until it was sold at, uh, for millions of dollars on an auction. It's, it's a beautiful movie. Um, my wife is a, an unwilling participant in this madness. She goes on all these excursions with me, and every once in a while she brings me something. And she says, I found this today, and it's ugly and weird and dumb, so I think you'd like it. <laughs> and she's usually right. Uh, my wife is a florist. And she, uh, she was visited by a woman, an old woman in Greeley, who owned one of the first flower shops in Greeley. She and her, her mother owned it. And she brought all this stuff in. And my wife brought me some stuff home and said, I figured you could use this in your act. Um, so she brought me some apothecary cards. Does everybody know what apothecary is? For those of you that don't, it's kind of like science, but based on crossing your fingers. Um, <laughs> Um, do we have any florists or, or plant people or uh, gardeners? Um, everything I do tonight is going to require some participation, so it's going to be a long night if I don't see some hands. I need two <laughs> volunteers for this one. So would you mind coming up, please? Oh. Yeah, yeah you're going to have to come up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to say I'm a gardener. But well, but that's, hey, you're, you're, uh, you're apparently the most expert person in this room. <laughs> so if you yeah, go ahead and go ahead and stand over on this side, please. Right by the trap door, perfect. Uh, we need one more person, one more person. It's gonna be a long night, folks. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, perfect, 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 come on. I'm Paul. Hi, Paul, Leanne. Leanne, over here. yeah, please, Connie. Uh, perfect, thank you. Okay, you. Um, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scoot over a little bit, and I know this, I told you guys I wasn't gonna do this. I need one of you to come stand on this side. I'm sorry, perfect, perfect. So, um, what I have is I have two bags, and inside these bags is something that's very similar, but at the same time, completely opposite. Since you volunteered, I'm going to let you pick your bag first. Which one do you want? Okay. Since you reluctantly came up, I'm going to let you pick your bag second. Which one do you want? No. Yeah, perfect, perfect. <laughs> All right. All right. So what I'm going to do is I just want you to kind of just feel the, you can squeeze the bag. Don't open it. Um, you're not going to tell what it is. Uh, what I would like you to do is I'm going to show you a card like this. Mm -hmm. And I want you to, based on just your gut feeling, do I, do I want to keep it or do I want to get rid of it? If you have a, a, an attraction to it, please say keep it. If neutral or a negative, say get rid of it, okay? okay. We're gonna start over here. Keep this or get rid of it? Get rid of it. Perfect. Keep this or get rid of it? You don't have to do this. Keep. Okay, if you, put your, uh, you put your, put your glasses down right there. You put your other hand out like this. We'll put that right there, perfect. Keep it or get rid of it? Keep it. Okay, if you same thing with your hand, perfect. Keep it or get rid of it? Toss. Okay, keep it or get rid of it? Get rid of it. Okay, there are only 63 more cards. <laughs> keep it or get rid of it? Okay, perfect. Keep it or get rid of it? Get rid of it. Okay. Keep it or get rid of it? Toss. Okay. Get rid of it. Mm, toss. Get rid of it. Keep. Okay. Get rid of it. 
Oh, you're not liking any of these cards. Keep. Okay. Keep. Okay. Pass. The last one. Get rid of it. Okay. Last one. Pass. Okay, perfect. What I didn't show you about these cards is some of them were used for healing. Some of them were used for poison. Hmm. Through the mix, healing, 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 poison, 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 oh, yeah. poison. Inside your bag is a plant that is alive. Inside your bag is a plant that is dead because you picked poison and you picked all healing. Huh. All right. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I, I did, like I said, I did magic when I was a little kid and I had this Fisher Price magic set. And if you go on eBay, you find one, they're $1,200, which is why my wife, will, I, my wife will not let me buy one. I want, I want the original set. It's a suitcase and it's got all these doors in it and these sliding things and it has all these stickers of all the places you, were, you, you performed. And I had this and I, and I played with it and I played with it and I played with it. And then I, got, I graduated from that and got into card tricks and coin tricks. And then I got to the age where beer and girls took over. <laughs> and uh, the downfall of most young men, beer and girls, uh, I put magic away for a long time. Um, my, my wife and I found out we were, we were expecting our, our first uh, about 13 years ago. And I had to move my stuff to make room for the kid. And I found my box from when I was a kid. I found all the cards and I found all of the, the different books. And I, I had a, my wife had a four-year-old when we met, so she was seven. And we sat on the floor and it was like riding a bike. I fell back in love with it. Uh, the first thing I did, as Alexa said, is I called uh, the Fort Collins Club, uh, Magic Club. And I said, I, I want to get back into magic. And how many people are here from Fort Collins? Most, most everybody from Fort Collins. Do you know the great Ludini? Yeah. Anybody? Know? Okay. Lou is my hero, and, and I, uh, I, I love that man. So he's the guy who answered the phone. And he said, um, I'll tell you all you want to know, but you got to buy me lunch. <laughs> you know Lou. That's, that's, that's Lou, right? So, so I, I, I played with my stuff, and I met him, and, and I, I found this. And this is a trick from when I was a kid. Does anybody, do we have anybody that was a magician when they were younger, or is a magician now? Okay. Has anybody ever seen this trick before? This is, they call it color vision. And you can buy this at, uh, it's one of those SS Ross tricks that you could buy and they were shrink wrapped with plastic. And um, the trick is you hand it to somebody and they pick a color, one of the six colors, and they put it up like this and they put the lid on and then they hand it back to you. And your move, you do a peek, it's a kid trick, you do a peek and you tell them what color it is. Well, this is mine from when I was a kid. And I've, you know that your favorite blanket, your favorite sweatshirt, it just kind of grows on you. So I found this and I was playing with it. I was showing my, my then six or seven year old and I'm showing her how to do it. And I, and I just started guessing and I was getting them right. Um, so I'm gonna, hand this, I'm gonna hand this to you if you would, okay? Now go ahead and take the, the box, add the, the cube out, please. I'm gonna turn my back and I don't wanna see. I want you to show the person next to you your, uh, the color. Put the color, put the box in and put the lid on. I don't want to see it. So go ahead and do that. Got it? Done. Okay. Um, give it a little bit of a shake. It's red. Am I right? You are correct. Am I right? All right, perfect, perfect. Now, if you hand it back to you, hand it to somebody behind you. All right, same thing. Same thing. I'm going to turn my back and I don't want to see it. All right, are you done? Uh -huh. Perfect. Okay, um, give it a little bit of a shake. One more. It's not red. Is it black? Yes. Perfect. Go, go one more back. Go one more to the one right back. Okay, now I want you to do this a little bit differently. Would you mind standing up? I want you to put it behind you. And so you don't know what color it is. But, sir, behind, if you'd kind of just peek and let him see what color it is. So none of us see what color it is. Oh, it's dark back here. <laughs> okay. You have a color? Yep. Okay. Now bring it forward. Just give it a little bit of a shake. What color do you think it is? Blue. Anybody else have a thought? Do you have a thought? Green. Came to mind. Open it up. Green. 
<laughs> nice work. Thank you very much. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow, we're flying through this. Good. I uh, got my degree from the University of Northern Colorado in history. I wanted to be a high school history teacher. Um, I studied bad guys. It was my favorite. The Wild West, the bad guys were, were the most fun. Um, Soapy Smith was a guy that I, that I loved. Does, does anybody know Soapy Smith? I know my, my history nerd friends over here. Soapy Smith was in Denver. So, Soapy Smith. He uh, was, was uh, uh, a little bit of everything. He owned a brewery. He was a con man. He was a politician. He was a realtor. He was a card cheat. Well, I read several stories about his card cheating. And I decided I was going to try to learn how to cheat like Soapy Smith. So I, I got all these. I learned second deals and I learned false shuffles and, and bottom deals and all this crazy, crazy stuff. And um, then found out that what he did is he, he had indexes. He had uh, different things in his boots. He had different things in his hat where he could pull any card he wanted at any time. So then I started doing that and I wasn't smart enough. So I forgot where cards were, and I, I'd be playing with a blue deck, and I'd be like, oh, I got this, and I'd pull out red, and it just didn't work very well. So I did, went further back and found out the first thing Soapy Smith did, he was a safe cracker, and he would, he would break safes. So I decided we're going we're gonna to try a little Soapy Smith experiment tonight. Um, it seems easy in the movies, right? When they put their ear up and they do it. I've tried that, and I don't know what to do. And I bought one of those. Have you seen those lock picking sets that have Houdini's face on it? I bought one of those. And they're clear locks. And they're about this big. And it shows you how to do this. And I couldn't do that either. But somehow this, this works every once in a while. So has anybody ever bought one of those lock picking kits or tried to put a stethoscope up to the thing? Does anybody want to try to, to break a lock? Don't everybody get up at once. <laughs> All right. All right. Perfect. Come on up. Thanks. All right. All right. So give this a turn and give it a pull. Let's see what. Uh, what give it a turn. Okay. Uh, this uh, reminds me of high school. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. yeah. And I'd always forget it. So what? Uh, what number are you on there? Zero. Okay. Oh, is it locked? It okay. Turn it to another number. Okay. Okay. Give it a pull. Is it locked? Yep. Six. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some numbers out here. Okay. Just grab a grab a handful of them. You're going to be the eyes and the ears for the audience. Okay. And just kind of read read some of those off. Just and uh, just just so yeah, and they're all different. Just just go ahead and verify okay. that they're all different. Yeah. Read them off as you see them. 16, 20, 15, 23, 21, 34, 36, 35. Okay. But so you're, you're, you you believe they're they're all different. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to take um, take one of those. I'll let you pick one of them. You okay. can look through them and pick a lucky number or Whatever you like. All right, that's the theme tonight, right? With all this lottery craziness. Yes. <laughs> number, so it's gonna be all right, put all put right. it put it here. The okay. one you picked. Which one did you pick? Twenty six. Okay. Now we'll take those. Okay. okay. Now I'm gonna give you of yours. I'm gonna put some face down. And I'm gonna let you pick out of those five. Okay. okay. I'm gonna put the uh, remaining four back in the bag and shake it up. And now reach in there and just grab one. Oh, and put that. Put the first one, the second one down there. Oh, Which yeah. one, so what do you got there? Sixteen, 16 and oh. you got right. one. What is that one? Nineteen. Perfect. Okay. So do you remember? It's what? Go this way uh, once, see, this and I then this forget. way. Uh, pass the number, and then directly to it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a lot of pressure. So okay. let's try. It. So we're going so twenty-six. We, so you go this way. Go oh, right, left, right. Yes. Okay. Right. So first you go. It's twenty-six. Twenty-six. Okay, and then go past the number, right? Go all, turn it the other way and go past uh, okay. 26 Two and nine. directly to 19, no, to 16 was your second number. Okay. Now directly to 19 the other way. Is that right? Go right. Yep, to 19. I love that Ralph figured this out. Okay, now give it a pull. Yeah, look at that. That opened up. All right. Well, it's uh, it's it's you opened it. So as Soapy oh, Smith boy. would say, it's the, the the treasure is yours. Okay. So inside are six envelopes. Okay. And um, the blue rubber band ate a lot of asparagus. Um, 
Actually, I asked, I asked my wife for Christmas. My wife got me a bag of asparagus rubber bands. Oh, it's, she's the best. So in here, there's, a, there's six envelopes. I want you to keep one for yourself. Okay. And on your way back to your seat, give the other five away. Oh, wow. And we're going to get back to this after a little bit. All right. Well, there you go. Thank you. I, um, I'm lucky enough that, that this is what I get to do for my job. For 19 years, I sat behind a desk, and I was a compliance officer for a bank. And most recently, I worked in the accounting slash finance slash credit department for the world's largest beef company. A couple of weeks before my 40th birthday, I called my wife and I said, I don't do this anymore. This sucks. And I came to the realization that uh, this isn't a, a dress rehearsal for anything. This is it. And I, I, was, I was miserable and I wanted to go do something fun. So I told my wife, I said, I'm going to quit my job today. And she said, well, do you have a plan? And I said, I do. <laughs> I'm going to become a professional magician, I'm going to lose some weight, and I'm going to work at a brewery. Well, I worked at a brewery and that didn't work out very well with the losing weight problem. And, but, but I, I, she, so my wife says, well, that sounds like a plan. And I took that as, that sounds like a great plan. You should do that. So, so I did. I quit my job that day and sat down writing, writing a story and writing a, writing a show. And I took that show and I've performed all over the world with it. I've, uh, it's, this is some, some of it tonight. I've performed on a train in Peru, in the Andes of Peru, for the cast and crew of Ancient Aliens, 10 of us, sat in a train for two hours and I did a magic show. I've had uh, 12 consecutive sellouts um, in New Orleans. Every time I sell out a show in New Orleans, I go get another tattoo. So that's, uh, it's, it's kind of to make sure I don't have to go back and get a real job because they won't hire an old man with a bunch of tattoos, hopefully. So it's, uh, it's very fun. I've got a few fun things coming up. I'm at Comic, I'm doing a first, my first Comic-Con next weekend in Cheyenne. Um, I'm going to do a lecture on card cheating, which is going to be kind of fun to do. So uh, this next bit is um, kind of a, a weird story. I started, when I started this, I was going to do seances. And I decided I was going to conduct real seances. And I, I, my first show, I asked people, who would you want to do? Like you guys, tonight I collected horror movies. I asked, who would you want to talk to? So I took that list and I made these cards. I made cards of the most popular answers. And do you mind helping me? You don't need to get up. You can stay right there. Okay. So we've got Michael Jackson, Jim Morrison, Whitney Houston, David Bowie, John Lennon, Prince, Carrie Fisher, Bill Hicks. Does everyone know who Bill Hicks is? I put this in here just, this is mine. Just so I can tell everybody, if you don't know who Bill Hicks is, who knows who Bill Hicks is? Thank you. If you don't know who Bill Hicks is, spend a few minutes and find out. Bill Hicks is my, my hero. James Dean, Farrah Fawcett, Frank Sinatra, Muhammad Ali. Anyway, they're a bunch. So what I want you to do is, um, tell me, I'm going to mix these up. I'm going to go through like this. I want you to tell me when to stop. Stop. Right there. Okay. Which pile do you want to keep playing with and which pile do you want to get rid of? I'll keep this one. Keep this one? Okay. Same thing. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay. Ooh, this is a... Which one do you want to keep and which one do you get rid of? These. You want to keep, keep. these ones? Okay. So we got six there, it looks like. So let's go in half. Which half do you want to keep? These. Okay. Now just put your finger on one card. This one here? Okay. What I'm going to have you do is take that card, hold on to it. Okay. Is it somebody you know? It's not Bill Hicks, is it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I should tell you, Bill Hicks is a stand-up comedian. And maybe the reason Mrs. Peel didn't like my bits is because I did quote Bill Hicks in the fifth grade. So you'll know what that means when you listen to Bill Hicks. So it's somebody you know. I've made a prediction. We're going to see if it's right. I have a picture of this person today in this envelope. Are you ready? Ta-da. <laughs> right? Ta-da. Am I right? Yeah. Who, who, who is your person? Elvis Presley. Oh. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, I, I asked you guys to collect, um, to write down your favorite horror movies. Horror movies are kind of a big deal, and it's how, how uh, Alexa and I started our conversations. I, I grew up watching all sorts of terribly wonderful movies. When I was in probably the sixth grade, my mom and dad grounded me because I was cutting up stuff and making a Freddy Krueger glove. And uh, 
it was, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So I, I all, as, I'm a, as you can see, I'm kind of a nerdy collector. And I collect this, these series of trading cards that are the 100 most popular horror movies. And I don't have the full set yet, but I have a, a group of them. I'll set hand some here. Hand some here. I'll hand, hand them back there a little bit. And if you look through them, there, there, there are some that are current movies, and there are some that are old movies. Um, and if you look at the back, and you, it just if you have a stack, pass some back. If you have a... Uh, if you look on the back, you'll see the, the list of all the ones that go in that set. So... Um, who, who, who wants to help you? Don't need to get up. We can do this from, from your seats. So do you, do you have a card? No. Nope. Okay, well, pick, pick one, and don't let me see which one it is. Um, and if you hold it so I can't see, you know, if you want to use a box to, to, to hold it in so I can't see it. Is this a movie you've seen? Yep. Okay. So what I want you to do is if you flip it over. So I, are you looking at the, the poster size, or are you looking at the list? <laughs> okay, flip it over and look at the list. Is your movie on that list no oh his movie that he picked the movie that's no the movie that's the card not the okay. no these are two separate the card is the front of the card the poster on that list yeah. 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 yeah yeah okay perfect what i want you to do in and you've seen this movie that you have the poster for what i want you to do is in no order so it doesn't appear as if i've memorized all these cards which would be rad but i i didn't um it, it, read off the names and just just in any order but make sure you say yours with the other ones and Okay, Rosemary's Baby, Get Out, The Omen, Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Fly, Poltergeist, um, Child's Play, Dracula, Tell Me When You Want to Stop, The Birds. Okay, that's, that's good. Watt. That's good. Now I want you to think of a scene from the movie, because you've seen this one, right? And I'm going to try to figure out what scene you're thinking of. Okay. Um, It's Jeff Goldblum, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's the he's crawling out of the the, the box. The, the the it's the fly, correct? He's he's crawling out and he's half. Yeah, you got the fly, right? Yeah. Is that right? Perfect. Okay. Um, who? Somebody in the back have one? All right. Perfect. Is same thing. Look at the front of yours, the poster side, and then flip it over. Is that poster on that list? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and same thing. If you, is it a movie you've seen? Okay, we'll try this. <laughs> we'll try this. All right, so uh, so I could tell you any scene, and you would be like, "Yeah, that's right." <laughs> um, so let's do the same thing, please. Just just in any order, read them out. All right, Dracula, Get Out, Dawn of the Dead, Saw, Hellraiser, The Shining, Carrie, Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Omen, Poltergeist. Blair Witch. Okay, so that, that's good. That's good. Um, but you haven't seen this movie. This is going to be tough. So turn it around and look at the picture of the, the poster. And I want you to kind of visualize the poster and kind of, kind of set, try to send me the, the, si the, the image that you're seeing. Right? And I'm, I'm getting um, a bunch of pins. Right? Is it Hellraiser? Right. Right. All right. All right. Perfect. 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 We'll do one more. And then we'll get to the fun little experiment. Somebody over here have one? You got one? Yep. Is it a uh, it's, of course it's a movie you've seen, right? I haven't. You haven't seen it. Perfect. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. We're going to try to see. Wow. I thought it's closer to Halloween. I mean, come on. You guys are Fort Collins. You're not Greeley. Um, <laughs> I do this with NASCAR cards in Greeley. Um, <laughs> I'm keeping that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So, so is, is, the, is the poster on the front, is it, on, is it listed on the back? All right. Okay. Yes. So go ahead and read, read through those. Uh, Halloween. Friday the 13th, Alien, Frankenstein, The Fly, The Exorcist, Evil Dead, The Amity, Amityville Horror, The Wolfman, The Wicker Man, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Invisible Man, Reanimator, Nosferatu, Hellraiser, uh, Misery, and The Mummy. Okay, okay. Um, now think of, think of the front. Does it also have a name, a person's name on the front? In the title, it's a title and then a name, right? Somebody's name, a man's name. Yeah, I mean, kind of. I mean, the 
Okay, well, I, 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 the title. Okay, okay. Um, you don't, you don't know, do you know the, do you know the story? No. Okay. Um, I'm believing it's based on a book. Does it say something it's based, it's an author, or does it say anything about a name? Yeah. Is, it, is it Reanimator? Yep. Herbert West Reanimator? Yep. H, it's an H.P. Lovecraft story. Yes, perfect. All right. If you would pass those cards to the very end, we'll collect them at the end. Thank you, guys. Wow. I asked everybody to put their, their in here. Um, I'm going to go in the back here. And since you knew Lou, I'm going to have you reach in and grab one. Just grab the first one. Don't, don't, you got one? Yeah. You only have one. I only, you only need one. All right. Got it? Okay. Yeah. All right, perfect. So let's see uh, some of the other ones. Halloween, Fire in the Sky. I've met Travis Walton. Who's who put Fire in the Sky? I Travis Walton's rad. Um, Saw, perfect. Some good ones. All right, the one you have Should is I it a movie at? you've seen? Uh, oh, what's that? Should I look at? Yes, please, but don't tell me. Is it a movie you've seen? No. All right, show some people around you, and see if any of those people have seen that movie. Okay, okay. So now I want you to think of your, your, your scene. You've seen it? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, do you mind helping me? You don't need to get up, you can see it from yeah. right there. Uh, I want you to think of a scene from that movie. Okay. And I, maybe the most iconic scene from that movie. Is it a movie you think most people in this room have seen? Probably. Is it fairly popular? Okay. Probably. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, think of the scene. Okay. okay. Um, is it cold? Yeah. It is? Yeah. We had two choices, hot or cold, right? <laughs> all right, all right. Um, and the uh, movies in color, that's another one. Yeah, good, okay. Um, I'm getting two different scenes. How do you know that? Are you thinking of two different scenes? Yeah. Okay, uh, and one of them is, is just a man, and the other one is a little boy, correct? No. Okay, well, I'm getting a scene of a little boy talking to his finger. Is it, it, but that's in the movie. That's in the movie. Okay, but so the one you're thinking about is the where he's breaking the wall, the, the door down. Here's, yeah, it's The Shining, though, right? That's the correct. All right, yeah. perfect, perfect. All right, all right, very great. All right, I'm gonna explain the board real quick. Um, this board, all the pictures, are different spirit mediums through history. Um, some American, some international, some fiction some nonfiction. The fiction ones are from uh, the movie Nightmare Alley. Has anybody ever seen it? Oh, yes. Somebody seen Nightmare Alley? <coughs> oh. Um, and uh, all of these people claimed to bring you fortune one way or another. And we're, we're going to get back to this, but I figured I ought to explain it. And there's, there's one woman on here, uh, Cora Scott is her name. And I am, I am absolutely in love with Cora Scott. And it's, it's driving me and my whole family crazy. Um, she got married the first time when she was 14 years old. And by the time she was 50, she'd been married seven times, which makes me believe if I were around, I'd have had a pretty good shot. <laughs> Cora Scott, if you look outside, um, I have a wrapping hand out there. I don't know if you saw the hand, that's a, that, that belonged to Cora Scott. And so uh, she's up there. I'm not gonna tell you which one she is. Maybe somebody will pick her when we get to that. Um, I spend a lot of time in New Orleans. It's my favorite city in the entire world. And I have a, a, a great venue that I get to go down and, and play in. And, and I absolutely love it. And I ask this question in New Orleans and I get a way different answer than when I ask it in Colorado. Do we have any tarot readers in the audience? Do we have any? We don't. Good. Okay. Because now I'm going to make fun of tarot readers. <laughs> I, I did a party a couple of years ago and I was one of, of two paid entertainment entertainers. And the other was a real tarot reader. And she watched my bit, and I, I knew she was there, so I didn't make fun of her, because she was very nice. She was very nice. And she came up afterwards. She goes, I'm kind of getting a vibe that you don't believe in this. And I'm like, <laughs> weird. <laughs> and uh, she, she said, I'd like to do a tarot reading for you. Have you ever had a tarot reading before? And I said, I, I haven't. And she said, would you like to come do one? And I said, I, no, I, I, it's OK. She's like, well, why not? And I said, I, I just, I have a theory. I have a theory on how you do this. And she said, Oh, yeah? And I said, yeah. She goes, well, I have some questions about your show. Will you, will you just at least come talk to me about the show? And I said, all right. So she put me down on her little schedule. She was in one of the offices in the house, and she had a 10-minute block. So she put me down for two 10-minute two blocks. So I went in, and she asked some questions about my show, and she asked some different things about some of the books I had mentioned, some of the movies I mentioned. And she said, okay, do you want a tarot reading? Wait, all right. You're, 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 you're nice, you're cute, you're fun, I'll do it. 
And so she hands me this beautiful deck of tarot cards and she shuffles them up and she hands them, she goes, shuffle them for me. And so I, I shuffle them a little bit and I hand them back and she goes, do you want me to cut the deck? And I said, yeah, so she cuts it. And I said, she goes, do you want to cut it again? And I said, yeah. So she cuts it again. She goes, do you want to touch it? And I said, I don't want to touch it. And she said, uh, do you want me to deal? And I said, yeah. She deals the top card over and it's the magician. <laughs> and she does this. And I went, ta-da. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. It was a one in 72 chance. I, I had nothing to do with it, but I'm going to capitalize on it. And she said, uh, she said, oh my God, that was amazing. Could you come and do that for my tarot readers group? And I said, I would love to be able to do that for your tarot readers group. <laughs> And she and I are now friends, and it's, 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 it's fun, but um, I, I was right on my theory. So, so I decided I was going to just jump, jump headfirst into tarot, and I was going to try to learn it. And I, I read every book. I, read, I started with the little Miss Cleo book. Remember Miss Cleo, the late night TV? She sells decks of, of tarot cards called the Power Tarot Power, I think. And on one side, they're Native American. On the other side, they're Egyptian symbols, which is very funny. Um, and I, I, they were like $4.99 for one or like $60 for 200. So I just bought 200 of them. And uh, we've, we've had fun with them. But then, I, so I read that book and then I got this huge encyclopedia of tarot and I read that cover to cover. I didn't like it any better. And so I started picking up different tarot books and I went to a tarot uh, reader in New Orleans that had written a book and I said, I'd like to buy her book. So she gave me the whole lesson. I didn't like any of them. So I decided I'm gonna write my own book on tarot. They're all made up anyway, right? So I'm, this, what's any better than this one? So I have, I have a, uh, an offer to do, to do a tarot reading. Would anyone like me to would like cards read? All right, come on up. Wait, 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 you. All right, come on over this way. Perfect. Watch the water right there. Yeah, watch. Yeah, perfect. All right. I'm Paul. Addy. Addy, great. Thanks. All right, so what I've got here is I have just the major arcanas, the ones that you notice that you see on, on T-shirts and um, wine bottles. I'm going to do it a little bit differently. than. Have you ever had your cards read before? Oh, okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to do it a little bit. How did they do it? Did they just do like a, a ribbon and then a cross and then tell you this? And some, if some were going this way, that meant something? Or what, how did they, do you remember how they did it? Um, I had to shovel them first and then I picked them from a ribbon, I think. And were they face up or face down? Probably face down, right? Yeah. Okay. We do it differently here at the Mystery Collection. We let you pick your card. So this is going to represent the past. Okay, we're gonna do a past, present, and future tarot reading. We're gonna do so, and you're gonna be the eyes and the ears for the audience on this. So we have the tower, we have the hanged man, we have the emperor, we have death, we have the devil, the hermit, or the moon. We're gonna start with these ones. This is gonna represent your past. Tower, hanged man, emperor, death, the devil, the hermit, or the moon? The moon. The moon, cool. <laughs> All right, the moon. Okay, now this is gonna be present. We have strength, the fool, stars, judgment, temperance, the empress, and the chariot. We'll go through them again. Strength, the fool, the stars, judgment, temperance, the empress, and the chariot. The fool. The fool. Perfect. Okay, this is future. The lovers, the magician. Justice, High Priestess, the Wheel, the World, and the Sun. Go through them one more time. The Lovers, the Magician, coincidentally next to each other. Justice, High Priestess, the Wheel, the World, and the Sun. The Wheel. The Wheel. The Wheel. All right, perfect. So, according to the greatest book ever written on tarot, available at www.mysterycollection.com, um, you have picked for your past, the moon. Tell me if this means anything to you. And if it does, pretty awesome. <laughs> um, the moon, creative juices will begin to flow. Imagination is about to work overtime. A dream will materialize. Your key words are creative, imagination, and dreams. Does that mean something to you? Yeah. Okay, it's something that's it's a good one. It's not like you're going to blow up or anything, right? Okay, so um, and then so present, you pick the fool, which I think is number. It's the zero. Yes, you're about to embark on a risky adventure. 
you're wanting to try something new in an impulsive purchase, travel, or vacation. Does that mean something? Yep. <laughs> two for two. All right. Risks, impulse, new start. Those are the words. All right. And so now your future is the wheel. The wheel. I think I'd know the number on it. The wheel. I'm missing the wheel? Did I forget the wheel in the book? That'd be funny. <laughs> oh, the wheel, the wheel, right. It's the wheel of fortune. It's on here, it just says the wheel, right, okay. Duh. Um, a marked improvement in a situation which has been a problem. Financial improvement, a successful outcome to an upcoming event. So you've got that to look forward to. That's a pretty good tarot reading, right? Right. Here's a book, you can have that. Um, so, but what, what uh, you all saw that she didn't see is on the backs, they're, they're just red backs on this one. On this one, you had your choice of any of these cards. There was none of this, I'm gonna riffle through, tell me when to stop. It was, it was a fair choice, you got to choose. Yeah. And I, I knew coming in here yeah. that these were the cards you're gonna pick. Because on the back of the moon, I wrote past. On the back of the fool, I wrote present. And on the back of the wheel, I wrote future. Thank you very wow. much. So I'm going back to New Orleans at the end of November, and I've got two shows. One we've already sold out, so I get another tattoo. Um, it's, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, do this tarot routine for a bunch of tarot readers, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, I like movies. I think you've kind of got the, the vibe that I like movies. Uh, I like movies so much that I, I incorporate a lot into my act. I talk about movies. As a matter of fact, I, I get a lot of my inspiration from movies. Uh, I watched a great movie on drugs the other night, and I liked it so much I'm going to start watching all of my movies that way. <laughs> um, I, I just do movie bits so I can say that joke. And um, I also like games, board games. So I tie the two together. One of my favorite movies is Clue. I, I grew up playing Clue. I, I love it. Um, I, I was asked to be part of a, a traveling a tour and they gave me 20 minutes in the middle of two other magicians. And I came up with this routine based on the game of Clue. And it was a 20 minute routine and I, I was so proud of it and I loved it. And I had a table like this and I had all of the, the weapons on the table. I had a real noose and a real pipe and a fake pistol and all the other stuff. And then on the wall behind me, I had wanted posters of all of the suspects. And then over on this side, I had a board similar to that with keychains that had the names of the rooms. And I had this great routine. And I'd worked on it and worked on it and built all the great props and, and was getting it done. The guy that, called, that put the show together calls me about three weeks before the show. And he says, are you ready for this, this tour? And I said, yep. And he says, well, talk me through your act. So I talk him through it. And he says, that's great. He says, I may, do you think you could stretch that another five or 10 minutes and do a full 30 minutes? I said, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And he said, all right, cool. Well, uh, I'll call you in a couple of weeks. Oh, I forgot to tell you. This whole tour is a benefit for the Pueblo Anti-Suicide Group, Suicide Prevention Group. And I said, I, Derek, I can't do it. I can't do that. And he was like, oh no, it'll be fine. And I said, I can't. I can't get up and hold a noose in front of a suicide prevention group. So uh, I scrapped it and uh, uh, tried to work a more family-friendly Clue routine. So what you're about to see is, is, uh, is has anybody ever seen the movie Clue? Oh, come on, some, I mean, all right, all right, all right. Um, who, somebody want to come up who's seen the movie come up and help me that hasn't come up yet? Who, who raised their hand? There was like three. Would you mind coming up and helping me? All right, perfect. So has anybody played Clue recently? They've changed it. They've changed it considerably. They're, they're, uh, there's no more conservatory. I'm Paul. Jen. Jen, come on, come on over here. Like I said, trap door. Um, they, there's no more conservatory. There's no more... The library is now a media room. Have you seen this, the new cards? Oh, yeah. It's terrible, it's terrible. They've given them first names. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's not, not. So I still play um, with the old cards. Good. So if you wanna step over here a little bit closer so you can be the eyes and the ears, if you'll just read these, or I'll read them off and just verify that I'm, I'm right. The conservatory, the kitchen, study, hall, ballroom, billiard room, library, lounge, dining room. Is that right? Yeah, correct. So uh, take these and shuffle those up. And without looking mm -hmm. at them, I, don't, I want you just to make an intuition guess. Mm -hmm. Put one in the envelope. Perfect. Okay, I'll take those. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we have candlestick, revolver, rope, knife, wrench, lead pipe, mm -hmm. right? Okay, mm -hmm. same thing. Perfect, I'll take those. All right, now the fun part. Colonel Mustard, Miss Peacock, Miss White, Professor Plum, two Professor Plums, Mr. Green and Miss Scarlet. Mm -hmm. Colonel Mustard, Miss Peacock, Miss White, Professor Plum, Mr. Green, and Miss Scarlet. Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing. Perfect. All right, go ahead and peel the uh, sticker off there. All right, we'll stick that closed. So I have, I'll take that, unless you want to keep it. No, it's fine. Um, I have three bags back here. Okay. I want you just to pick one of the bags and put it on top of the, the Ouija board. Perfect, set it right there. All right. In this bag, what you didn't pick is a t-shirt that says, Mrs. Peacock with the revolver in the study. Also available at www.mysterycollection.com. In this one, you did not pick Mrs. White with the candlestick in the billiard room. In the bag that you picked is Mr. Green with the pipe in the conservatory. Mr. Green in the conservatory with a lead pipe. Uh, that shirt's for you. Thank you. I have other sizes if you need another size. I packed some other sizes. Yep, thank you. This is my favorite story to tell because it's 100% true. When I was a little kid, I was a weirdo. When I was a kid, I mean, I, I grew out of that. And um, I had an imaginary friend named Yehudi. And uh, oddly enough, I've had this discussion with some people in this room and they also had a, a Yehudi, not quite as an experience like I did. Um, Yehudi would make me do awesome things. Uh, we called the police a lot. We, we called 911 a lot. Um, Yehudi one time had me take all of my brother's toys. I have a younger brother and a younger sister, and I was probably four or five, and I took all of my brother's toys and his clothes out of his drawers and his toy box, and I swapped them with my sister's clothes and my sister's toys and just sat back and just went, oh. Um, Yehudi figured out that my next door neighbors were probably aliens, so we called the police and, on that. Yehudi was, was my hero. Yehudi was my best friend. And uh, Yehudi had a place at our dinner table. I set a place for him every night. And Yehudi, I could not go to sleep until Yehudi had, my mom had also told Yehudi a story and kissed Yehudi goodnight. So uh, fast forward a couple of months when after the, the real big problems. And we were at a grocery store. I think there was a Toddy's grocery store here in Fort Collins at one time. There was a Toddy's in Greeley, close to where I grew up. We went to the grocery store and Yehudi said, Paul, I got an idea. This might be my crown jewel of ideas. I said, okay, all right. He said, I think you should get in the ice cooler. And I said, all right, I'm in, I'm in. So I open the door to the big glass door ice chest, hop in, move a couple bags, make a little throne, and just sit there and watch all the shoppers go by. Now this is 1979, 1980. This is about Adam Walsh days when, you know, getting kidnapped was cool. And my mom, my, my mom freaks out. She's got a, uh, you know, probably a two-year-old and a newborn, and she flips out. Her kid's missing. Her favorite of her kids is missing. <laughs> and she's running around the grocery store just bawling that her, her, her prize has been taken from her. And I'm just watching people go by. Well, this woman walks by and sees a little boy turning blue, and she screams. She drops her bag, and she screams. And they, they come, security, they call my mom. My mom's in tears. And she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, you hootie. And she just had it. And I don't know if I've ever seen my mom this mad since, and I've given her plenty of reason. Um, she put her finger out like this, and she said, no more. Yehudi stays here. He is not coming home with us. Yehudi stays at the grocery store. I cried for days. I was broken. I was broken. It really, really devastated me. So I saw something else shiny a couple weeks later and got over it. <laughs> but fast forward 30-some years, and I'm sitting at a desk with two spreadsheets in front of me, just working away and thinking, um, 
I wish I could go home. I'm listening to the Paranormal Podcast with Nick Redfern. Does anybody know the Paranormal Podcast with Nick Redfern? Uh, Nick Redfern, anybody watch Ancient Aliens? Nick Redfern's the guy with the teeth, not with the hair. And <laughs> Nick Redfern mentions Project Yehudi. I'm like, my people, he knows. He knows where he is. So I, I shut down all my spreadsheets and I look up all the information I can find on Nick Redfern. I find his email address and I send him an email and I told him my whole story. I just spilled my guts about my best friend, Yehudi. And so Project Yehudi, you, you know where Yehudi is. And he said, uh, for $25, PayPal me $25 to this and I'll send you my book. So I did. And a month later, the book shows up. In the meantime, my, my, I call my mom. Mom, Yehudi's back, sucker, you're done. <laughs> and, uh, and he's pissed, he's pissed. And I told my wife and my wife, she's like, oh my God, I cannot believe you're still a grown up. And, but I was, I was excited because some, I'd, I'd never heard Yehudi before. I had never heard it since. And so, so I get the book and I'm reading it. And Project Yehudi was a real project. And it was a project in World War I and World War II. And it was a naval intelligence project where they would send floaters, like uh, just little float barges out with a bunch of mirrors on it and lights and balloons. And it would, this is before radar and, and satellites were, were perfected. And so the bad guys would see something that's emitting light and, and they see it. So they turn their guns this way. Well, meanwhile, the good guys would come up behind them. This is about the same time that I saw the movie Conspiracy Theory with Mel Gibson. So I figured, all right, I, I got to do some sleuthing. Because I figure if I get to the bottom of this, I'll find Yehudi again. So I, I do some research on naval intelligence, and I find a name that keeps popping up. Um, we, Fort Collins may know about James Michener. You know James Michener? Yeah. Okay. So uh, our, uh, our library at the University of Northern Colorado is named after Michener. Michener wrote, I don't know how many, seven, nine, eight hundred books. Um, won a Pulitzer Prize. And so I decided to start with the book about our area. So. I went out and bought Centennial. Has anybody read this? Oh, nice. So you know what I'm saying when I say it gets good at about right there. <laughs> okay, okay. So I read this book, and while very entertaining and very, a very fun book for being as big as it is, nothing about Yehudi. So I thought, um, who, who has read this book that would want to come up and help me? Okay, who hasn't read this book that wants to come up and help me? <laughs> I'm going to start picking. All right, sir. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Oh, and you got an envelope, too. Perfect. Yeah, please. Uh, I'm Paul. I'm Paul, too. Oh, nice. Nice. All right, go ahead and stand here. So what I'm going to have you do is uh, just eyes and ears of the audience. This is a, they are all different pages. Are you with me there? Um, how many pages are uh, in this book? 1,068. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is just somewhere in there, just take your finger and just open it to a page, right there. Oh, no, just, just, just stick your finger in a page. Right there, perfect. We're gonna mark your page with this picture of W.D. French, which I will get to here shortly. So, now if you remember, Project Yehudi, something's here. The page you picked is what number? 430. Perfect, okay, hold that book. The project, it's something here, and then it's over here. You think you see it, and then you don't. Needless to say, Nick Redfern does not email me back. So I don't know anything more about Yehudi, but I do know that there is some, something to Centennial about Project Yehudi. What was your page? 430. Go ahead and look at page 430. What? Page 430 is missing from the book. There's a little bag hanging under that thing. It's been here the whole time. Go ahead and take that. What's in the bag? Page 430. And is that a fit? Oh, sorry, I got upside down. Is that a fit? That is a fit. That is a fit. And that is for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I did this. My, my, uh, my parents, as proud of they are as, as they are of me for quitting a really good job in finance to be a magician, 
um, have, have seen me perform twice. And they, they saw, I've been doing this Project Yehudi bit for a couple of years, and they, they came to see me a couple weeks ago uh, when I did it at a theater in Greeley. And uh, I was expecting them to be like, oh, that's awesome. And my dad stood in line as I'm signing posters and selling shirts and he said, now you were like six. You tell everybody you're four or five. You were like six. I'm like, thanks, thanks, dad. Thanks, thanks. So he, he, he corrected me. He corrected me. All right. So this is uh, uh, the end. This is the, the, the finale. This is one of the pieces that's brand new to me. We get to the spirit board. If everybody who has an envelope, please stand up. Thank you. All right, um, I'm going to have you come up one at a time. David, since you, uh, you handed out the envelopes, I'm going to have you come first. If you would, just take a look at this board. And if one of these people strikes you as something that's going to bring you fortune, just point at them. Okay. Oh, do you know who this is? No. This is Rasputin. Oh. Yes. All right. Yeah, perfect. Now, if you go stand on the other side, we're going to line up there. Okay. Sir, come on up. Do you have your envelope with you? I do. Okay. All right, I'm Paul. Corey. Corey, thank you for coming up. Okay, go ahead and point, point at one of them. Yeah. Oh, Edgar Casey. Perfect, perfect. All right, if you go stand, stand next to David there. All right, yes, sir, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm Paul. Great. Great, thank you for coming up. All right, look at one of these, and, and if one of them strikes you as a, all right, I picked this lady because she looks like my grandma Isla. If you go ahead and stand over there, I don't know who she is. So, all right. Um, she just looks like my grandma, and I thought it was cool. Um, all right. You got to pick one of them. Just look through and, and just point at one. All right. This was one of the White House mediums during Abraham Lincoln's time. So I think you over there. All right, ma'am. Oh, Cora Scott. Yes. That's my girlfriend, Cora Scott. Thank you very much. All right, and sir, I don't know what you right here? Yeah. Perfect. All right, I just thought that was a cool picture too. So, uh, all right. So what, uh, what I had you do is just pure intuition. There was no weird, like, shuffling of decks. What I didn't show you about this earlier, uh, this is uh, Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley is number 48. Uh, this guy here is uh, Clifford Bias. I have a book out there by Clifford Bias. Uh, he was the guy who invented or came, discovered the spirit trumpets. I have a spirit trumpet out there used by Clifford Bias. This is another Aleister Crowley. Um, the Fox Sisters, 37. Alexander, the man who knows, number five. Mary Todd Lincoln, number 44. Nightmare Alley. Number 63, Teresa Caputo. She's the only one on alive that's alive on this board. And I put her on there. That way I could just say, I hate Teresa Caputo. <laughs> She's 47. Eric Jan Hanussen, one of the greatest stories in history. Eric Jan Hanussen was, a, was the cleric for the Nazis. He was the guy that ran the paranormal, superstitious, whatever part of the, of the Nazi of the Third Reich. He had a, a team of almost 2,000 soldiers and mediums underneath him. They eventually killed him when they found out his name was not Eric Jan Hanussen. It was Hermann Steinschneider. <laughs> He's number 24. Pearl Curran, number 59. You see where I'm going. There's numbers on the back of all of these. I won't bore you with flipping them all over. But, David, you picked... Number 55. Yep. Edgar Casey is number 36. The woman that looks like my grandma Isla is number 21. The guy from the White House is 18. Cora Scott is number three, but number one in my heart. And the last one is number 14. If you would please open those envelopes. What you have in there is a Mega Millions ticket that I bought at Come and Go this morning on my way over to Fort Collins. If you would please, out loud, read the first number on the board. Or on the, on the ticket. Three. 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 No, 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 I'm, I'm oh. sorry, go second. I'm sorry, second, I wasn't clear. Second, so I'm second? Yeah. 14. Se 14. 18. 18, David. 36. 36. 55. 55, and the power play number? 21. 21. <laughs> There are, now, I, I've done this for a few months, and I discovered 
how dumb would I be if I didn't buy one for myself, right? I make six people millionaires and I don't have one for myself and I gotta schluck this stuff around for the rest of my life. So um, there is one stipulation to this. If you win, win we win, you have to have a ridiculously huge party and completely overpay your entertainment. Thank you guys very much. Thank you for uh, making a little boy's dream come true. Thanks.